Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. In this video, I want to talk to you today about hydrostatic pressure. So what is hydrostatic pressure? So as the name indicates, it is the pressure in a stationary or static incompressible fluid or liquid. Before we can carry on with hydrostatic pressure, we just need a little recap on pressure in general. So what is pressure? Pressure is a force acting on a specific area. So P equals F over A. And we can calculate F as the mass multiplied by the acceleration. The SI units for force is Newton and for area is squared meters. And if you look at the equation on the right hand side, mass will be kilograms, acceleration will be meters per second with meters squared at the bottom and then the meters at the top and the meters squared at the bottom cancelling out, with this then being the base units. In the American engineering system, this will be given as PSI or the units for pressure as PSI, which is the same as pound per square inch. Very important, this pound is a pound force and not a pound mass. Okay, so let's look at the pressure in fluids, liquids and gases as a start, so that we can get to the hydrostatic pressure in the static liquids or the static fluids. Here we have a system, so we have a cube, we define the cube with the top T, the bottom B, and the sides being S. Let's start with the easiest of the three, and I would say that would be gases. So for gases, we know that if we take any one of these sides of this cube away, the gas will escape. The gas particles are moving everywhere, they're bumping to each other, and they're exerting the same pressure everywhere in this volume. This means that P at T equals to P at S equals to P at B and is equal to NRT over V. And Bob's your uncle. The next one I want to have a look at is solids. If we take our box and we take the top off, my solid's not going to jump out. If I take the sides off, my solid's not going to jump out either. Remember guys, a heap of sand is not a solid. It is a heap of sand. It's not one solid. I have a solid block inside this cube. So if I take the sides off, it's also not going to jump out. So we know that P at the top must be equals to zero, and it must also be the same for P at the sides. But what is the pressure at PB, which is not equal to the pressure at the top and the pressure at the sides? And this is easy. This is the mass of the solid multiplied by the acceleration, because that's the force that it's exerting over the area at the bottom at B. And there you go. We have calculated the pressure in the system of the solid. Let's now look at liquids. So now let's look at the pressure in the liquid. I'm going to repeat the drawing of my little cube. If we go and we take the top off, the water will not jump out. We know that. But when we draw a little hole below the top, the water will actually be pushed out. If we draw a hole, same size, some distance lower down, close to the bottom, the water will actually be pushed out further than what it would have been pushed out at the hole at the top. This implies that the pressure on the side is higher than the pressure at the top and gets higher as we go down. So we know PT equals to zero and is not equal to PS. And this is not equal to PB. But PB is equal to the same as with the solid, the mass of the system multiplied by the gravitational constant, the acceleration pulling it down over the area at the bottom. Now, the mass of the liquid will be equal to the density multiplied by the volume. The volume, we can actually go break up and say that it is equal to the 
area at the bottom because it's a cube area is the same everywhere multiplied by the change in height why do i say change in height height at the top is zero height at the bottom is whatever the length of my side s is and suddenly we see that the areas cancel out and that pp is actually equals to rho g multiplied by the height of the system so we can actually say that the pressure at any point in this tank can be given by the density multiplied by the gravitational constant multiplied by the change in height from the top of the tank to wherever we want to calculate that value and this is the fundamental of hydrostatic pressure so let's look at our system again let's say we cut our tank at a certain height now we have an element of water yeah what is very important is that we know that in this element of water because it's the same height from the top the pressure in all directions at all places at all points in the system must be equal to each other so we have equal pressure the same pressure everywhere in that differential element that we've just slid out of this tank so my next question is this pressure at that point that we just calculated is it absolute pressure is it gauge pressure or is it atmospheric pressure for us to solve this let's go look at our system again so there is the initial container that we had we cut it at this position and here is our differential element for which we've calculated the pressure so we've calculated p at this position as the density multiplied by the gravitational constant multiplied by the change in height for that element what we do know is that at the top of this tank it was exposed to the atmospheric pressure suddenly we understand that this pressure cannot be the atmospheric pressure because the atmospheric pressure is applied to the outside of the system and we have calculated an additional pressure in the liquid due to the change in height now in the same way we did with the gas where we said we put extra gas in and that gives us extra pressure so the gauge pressure is above the atmospheric pressure that gives me the gauge pressure this will be the same so this pi is actually the gauge pressure in the system calculated as rho g delta h at i but i could also get to the absolute pressure at this point i by saying that i have rho g of this change in height plus the atmospheric pressure thus this pi can actually be either the gauge or the absolute pressure depending on whether we add the atmospheric pressure to the system or not if we just calculate rho g h it is the gauge pressure if we add the atmospheric pressure it is the absolute pressure i hope you enjoyed this lesson